it's but it's crazy that like if I gave you a Xanax and then you drank a ton, took it, and then uh I and died, I would go to jail. Yeah, I've done that before. I took a totem pole. Pull up, give this a goog. They're called totem poles or green hulks. <sighs> Tell the story. I took one. I've told the story a few times, but uh I took one and I was like, I don't want to be hung over. Me and my friend are going tubing. In San Antonio in the morning. There they are. Look how big that is. That is, whoa. That's a green Hulk. And you're supposed whoa, to take- Whoa, I want the one that says Xanax on it. Oh, yeah. That's classic. Oh, man. What the fuck do I have? I have the fucking knockoff Alorazepams. Yeah. I dated her. Black chick. But <laughs> uh, so I took a whole one, and I don't even touch this stuff ever. We got hammered one night, just tequila shots, tequila shots. But we're going tubing in the morning, so I want to get a good night's sleep. Pop the whole thing. I slept for like 38 hours. Hang on. Unpack that. Yeah, it was bad. I I got kicked out of my hotel room. They pulled me out of the room in the Red Roof Inn in San Antonio, put me in the lobby with my bags. They packed my bags. I got all kinds of shit in my bag, money and dildos and other <laughs> shit, you know, props that on the road. I got a rubber chicken. And they put it all in a bag and put me in the lobby, and I just slept in the lobby for like another 12 hours. People were coming in, checking in. What the fuck? Yeah. So do, do you have any anxiety the next, the, when you wake up and you start working, your body starts working again. Yeah. And you and you take your first shit in fucking 36 hours. Yeah. And check the how much piss is in your pants. I know, right? How, well, what, like, do you have any anxiety about, like, about your, your hands working right or your feet working right or your brain or? Well, my friend was, like, calling me, calling me. Why isn't he answering? What the hell? And so he just showed up at the hotel, sees me in the lobby and he's like, what the fuck happened? They're like, will you get rid of this guy? And he picks me up and he said, my feet were dragging. He took me to a bodega or a, you know, a corner store. And he bought me like a couple of seven ups and a water and all that. And brought me back to his house and was just like, and then eventually we got IVs. Holy shit. Yeah. And I came to, we did a show that night. Really? Yeah. I was off, but yeah, it was fun. Sweet. So and, and you think, was it laced with something? I think so, but I'm also a lightweight with pills, so it could have just been me not used to it, taking that much at once with all that booze. It's funny you hear about people o overdosing on. I will not. I, the reason, one of the reasons I do the Xanax trick to myself is that if I take a chip of Xanax, I will not drink. I will. Oh, not that's drink. smart. See? I no, I know, I know, I know myself. You're still responsible. Well, I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of death. I had a problem with Xanax. I had a legit problem. Really? With it. Yeah, yeah. With. Uh, when I first started dating Leanne, I was unaware. It was prescribed to me, and I was unaware of how addictive benzos were. Mm. And so, um, and, and by the way, benzo withdrawal is you can die from. Mm. So it's like it's they won't take you in rehabs if you're addicted to benzos. Yeah, my buddy was addicted to benzos, and they took him to rehab, and the rehab said, "No thanks, get him off benzos first. That's how fucked up benzos are. And by the way, I joke about Xanax, but for real, Xanax is a bad fucking drug. My cardiologist, it is. my cardiologist, told me because uh, I, I was telling him, my, you know, about my throw it in my blood pressure medicine thing, and he was like, well, obviously he's a doctor, so he's like, "The fuck are you doing?" I was like, <laughs> "I was like, I don't know, man, just like a little day off for myself." And he yeah. was like, "Don't ever do that." He was like, "Don't ever do that." And by the way, don't ever take Xanax; it fucking melts your brain. Do not take Xanax. And I was like. Okay, wow. Wow, just zillions of Americans are taking it every day. Yeah, I'm not taking you on my tour bus. <laughs> See, I, I got the chip when I took the vaccine. But either way, <laughs> um, I, it's that, that withdrawal shit is so scary because uh, I remember when the, the peak of the pandemic, when it was new and scary and everybody was staying inside, I was staying in Beantown with my lady, and everything was closed but the liquor store. They call it a package store out there. Yeah. And I was like, I went in there. I bought a case of beer and a, and a rack of White Claws and all this. And I was like, how come you guys are open? They said, we have to be open legally because if alcoholics can't get booze, they'll die. And I was like, God, Oh, damn. my God. Don't ever let me get there. Yeah. So I I bought an extra case. Put this over here. Yeah. You know, that's that the uh, I said to someone, we were watching some documentary about pills. It's heartbreaking when you see someone really addicted to pills. Yeah. And I said, I said out loud. I, it's so funny, uh, prescriptions aren't my thing. I, I I don't really give a fuck about them. And Leanne was there and she went, that's a lie. Mm. And I was like, what? She goes, you've been addicted to pills twice. And I went, no, I haven't. I actually said, you know what I, my statement was? 
painkillers aren't my thing. They don't work on me. Like, I can't feel them. Like, Tom loves them. Like a Vicodin? Tom loves pain pills. Everybody loves them. I don't, they, I don't feel them. When I got surgery on my arm, they gave me, like, the highest one you could get. And I stopped taking it. So I was like, I don't, I, I don't feel it. And I know that I'm co- constipating myself. I'm still in pain. I'd rather just deal with the fucking pain and get it over with. Yeah. Damn. But I think people love them. I and mean, people drink with them. I they said were to, big when I was in college. I said to Leanne, I said, uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, pain pills aren't my thing. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't even give a fuck about them. She goes, you, you were addicted to pain pills. I was like, no, I wasn't. She's like, when you fell off the, off the waterfall. And I went, oh, fuck, I was. Because I got Oxycontin. Not oxy, Oxycodone. What, whatever. I got one of the Oxys. Oh, those Oxy bad. <laughs> and I was eating them. Prescri- they were prescribed to me. Meaning, he said, take one every four hours. Jesus. Four hours with a, um, you get it ready for this, with a Valium. So I was getting an oxy and a Valium every four Who hours. Was this, Michael Jackson's doctor? I, well, I, well, I was in so much of fucking pain. I fall off a waterfall. Last story I'm going to tell, and then Mark will talk the whole well, episode. That, first of all, that sounds like a pill addiction. Like, oh, you heard about Bird. He fell off the waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like when you start getting back into pills. Do you want to tell me? You want me to show? Hey, can you t- see if you can f- see a picture of me on a stretcher uh, on Instagram? I, I'm such a fucking jackass. I fall off a waterfall. I, it's it's a horrible, horrible, horrible. Oh, look at how small my arm was. Did you Damn, see that picture? Look at that. That's, that's after surgery. Look at how small it was. Wow. Gross. I was I photoshopped it. Anyway, oh. <laughs> I do the opposite to my dick all the time. <laughs> and uh so I uh I fall off a waterfall. Yeah. They can't get a hella back in there. They cut me out of a dry suit. I then have to crawl on my hands and knees. I think they put pants on me. So I was in my underwear. I was in a dry suit. Did you hit a rock? What happened? I was rappelling, and uh, it's really interesting. Don't ever get too comfortable in anything you do. When it comes to like high, like surfing, uh, rappelling, ice climbing, I've done, I've done everything there is to do. Mm. But don't ever get too comfortable. Always be aware of the danger that's sure. around you. Uh, I heard listen to Nathan Florence say that the other day as he was like, I'm hyper aware of just how how quick things can turn bad. So I post this picture like a fucking jackass Whoa. before I called my wife. Ah, uh, <laughs> damn! I posted it before I called my wife. I have glasses on because I was crying. Wow! Yeah, I was crying. You know, you want to know? You want to know a weird part? So huh. I crawl on my hands and knees out of a ravine, 210 feet up. It's, it's vertical. Yeah. So I, to crawl on a trail on my hands and knees because I couldn't. My legs didn't work. My legs worked, but I couldn't move them up like this. Uh-huh. I, I could only kind of shuffle them. Yeah. So I just had to kind of crawl. I get up to the top. My whole crew's with me. I am laying on the ground. I'm in the most pain I've ever been in. I'm crying. I'm in crying. I'm in that much pain. I'm crying from the pain. And I'm also in my... And uh, these two girls walk up, and they see the camera crew. They see me on the ground, and they're like, what's happening? And I'm listening. I can hear them. And they're like, uh, they're like, oh, a, our host of our show fell. And they're like, who is he? And he's like, oh, he's, his name's Bert. He's a comedian, but he hosts a show on Travel Channel called Trip Flip. And they're like, oh, okay. And then the girl, one girl comes over as if I hadn't heard her. And she goes, hey, I'm a huge fan. Do you mind if I get a pick? Oh, wow. Oh, uh, I wanted to fucking turn into a grizzly bear and fucking Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Just fucking killer. <laughs> I know. And so, so they 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 get me out of the the woods that day, and it's I mean it's the most. <sighs> you ever had an experience where you go, I don't. Very simply, uh, this is something I think you relate to. Hungover as fuck. Mm. You wake up in the hotel room and you realize you have all day of travel to get to where you you have to be. Yeah. And and you look at you go, how am I going to get through today? Right. Daunting. And then at the end of the day, you're like. Man, I got through it. It was, wasn't that hard as I thought. Well, imagine that if you're at the bottom of a ravine and you realize I need to end up in a hospital. I need to crawl out on my hands and knees. I then have an hour hike out that I don't know how I'm going to do. Uh, I then have a fucking hour drive to the hospital, right. all of which I don't know how I'm going to do. Right. And so I, uh, it was that was I remember that I remember that feeling of this isn't possible. So we get 
on a fucking stretcher in the back of an ATV. The most pain I've ever been in my entire life. Bumpy. I think my back's broken. I think it's broken. <laughs> wow. Because I can't, nothing's working on me. I get to the hospital and they give me Dilaudid and immediately I'm, I'm, I can walk around. What like, is that, a drug? It's, it's pharmaceutical heroin. Uh, oh, it's what heard of that. I watched them give it to Tommy. I watched them give it to Tommy when he broke his arm and broke his leg. And, uh, I could see his mouth changed. Like he went like, he, he was like, it was like this and the thing. And they go, well, I'm going to be a little odd. And he went like this. <laughs> he was like, oh man, that stuff really works. And it immediately, immediately. Yeah. And so then the guy, the doctor's like, I didn't break my back. It was a contusion. Out of all things, it was a contusion. Ooh. Didn't break anything. It was just a contusion. I swear to God, I, as crazy as it sounds, it felt like a broken back. But I couldn't use any of the muscles in my back if I didn't have my pills. I passed out that night. I got, he gives me pills. I went out that night. I had a drink. Wow. Like, I, like all of a sudden, I was totally fine. I had head cheese for the first time in my life. <laughs> I was giggling with people. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm actually good. Should we keep continuing the episode? And so everyone travels here. I was like, oh, we'll do it. I get to the hotel. I I did a fucking, I did a, 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 I did a, a podcast intro. Uh -huh. I'm high as fuck. I'm eating pills. I go to bed and I, without thinking, I put my pills where I can't reach them. I wake up in the middle of the night having to piss and I can't move. I can't move my back. I can't move everything. And I have to piss in the bed. Yeah, I've been there. <sighs> Dude, uh, my sound guy came in. They, cause they, they, I wasn't, I didn't go down to call time. I, I couldn't get out of bed. I was stuck there. I was yeah. in the, and all my pain pills ran out, all the Dilaudid ran out. The the volume is a is a muscle relaxant. My sound guy came in and I was in my bed crying because I was like I'm in pain, but I'm crying because I'm like, what if no one finds me? Like I'm having panic about it. Yeah. And he is like, I remember <laughs> his name is John Sales. I remember he comes in and he just goes, oh buddy. Ah. <laughs> and he got me up. I took my pills and then and I called Leanne. You want to know the gangster part of the story? I called Leanne. I had a gig in Aspen. That weekend, I was going to do the filming, and then that weekend, I was going to be in Aspen. And I told Leanne, I said, uh, I don't think I can do the gig. It was 25 grand. She goes, no, you can do it. Damn. She goes, load up on pain pills. I'll grab you. Isla and I are going to fly out. We're going to take you to Aspen. We'll get you wow, to Aspen. Oh, what a we'll wife. Get, it was, whoa, it's 25 grand. That's what she wanted. She saw the fucking price tag. She's like, I don't care how much you are. I'm ah, paying you are. I get it. A gig's a gig. But cut to two weeks later, I'm eating. I, I'm through my prescription. I got another prescription, uh, and I and I did I did something I'm not really proud of is I called my I got another prescription from the North Carolina doctor and I called my doctor in um, L A to get a prescription. Oh, you doubled up. Yeah, and Leanne found out, and she was like, I woke up one morning, I'm in bed, I reach over to get my pills. She's standing there, she has both of them in her hands. She goes, chick, 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 chick. she goes, you're done, big boy. Damn. I said what? She goes, you're done. I said. Baby, give me one more just to get start my day. She That's goes, what they all say. She said, nope. That's she how you got to do it. Poured them out. She's like, you're done. Cold turkey, big boy. Let's do it. Damn, get up. Yeah, what a shame. She could have sold those to Ralphie May at least. <laughs> oh, that might have been too far. No. R.I.P. I, I called Ralphie May the other day. What? Yeah. I, was I got bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard. <laughs> Did you get the voicemail? <laughs> I mean, Jesus. All right. This is This is horrible. Bert and Tom, Tom and Bert. One goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave. 